This is a 2019 Mercedes-Benz GLC 300 for Matic. Today we're working with our friends at Sears Imported Auto selling beautiful Mercedes-Benz cars and SUVs. Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, Two Guys, guys in a ride. ride. And today, Nathan, tell the folks what we're taking a look at. Hey, today we have a 2019 Mercedes-Benz GLC 300 for Matic. Uh, and it's absolutely gorgeous. But say, if you want to keep up to date with new cars, trucks, and SUVs, and you want to know all the latest vehicle technologies, and you love cool collector cars, take a second to hit that subscribe button below and ring that bell notification so you never miss a video. So what do you say, Nathan? Let's, Let's go, go for, for a ride. ride. All right, so today is another new chapter in our YouTube channel. First of all, thanks everyone for getting us to uh, over a thousand subscribers right. and over a hundred and hundred and five thousand views views on yes. our video. So that's pretty cool. Just awesome. Uh, so another new chapter is we are at a Mercedes Benz uh, dealership at uh, Sears Imports. Yep and uh, we are working with them. And today we're driving a 2019 uh, Mercedes-Benz GLC 300 4 Matic. Yes. You know, uh, first of all, a, a very comfortable ride. Just in terms of, of the seats, um, the handling, the roll, it all works together to make it a, a comfortable ride. Um, it was, you know, it's, it's a little SUV. Um, and it is really easy to step in and out of. There's no need for like a step, you know, like some of the big pickups we've driven and we said, yeah, probably do want to get a step on this one, but no, right, right. not on this very easy, drives like a car. Um, you know, one of the cool parts about that is I've read a study that the average height of the uh, of a female in America is five foot four. So that's important to know that it's a more easy step in and step out, both for the adult male and the adult female, because if you want it for yourself as a man or you want to buy this and, and your wife is going to drive it as well, that's going to be extremely important on how easy it is to get in and out of. Yeah. And for the kids too, obviously. Yep. Now, uh, as far as like, um, you know, just driving around town, this one does come with a navigation, so you can use that. Um, does come with Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, so you can also use navigation on your phone okay. if you want to do that instead. And then, um, but just in terms of driving around, I've been trying to drive it here down in some, uh, just in a neighborhood area where we got some, a few turns um, and slower speeds, and it handles really well. Uh, just, it's very, very easy to maneuver. Um, really tight turning radius. Oh yeah. I, I, I yep. don't know what it is, but you know, I'll I was tell doing, you what it is in just a little bit. Yeah, Rob will <laughs> tell you that. I did some, um, made some sharp turns behind Rob, and uh, let's just say I was turning way shorter than he was. Oh yeah. Yep. So, um, but yeah, just so it's easy to step into it. It's easy. It's intuitive where the controls are. There's enough physical buttons laid out that it's easy to say, okay, this is how I set my temperature. This is uh, where my, um, you know, where my speed is. Um, blinkers, windshield wipers, you know, um, it'd be pretty easy to step in and just figure out where things are. All right, so we're gonna pull over here and let Rob drive. Now that I'm lost, I figure he should <laughs> have to figure out where we're going. Now, I'm very comfortable here. I know where all the switches are. It just fell right to hand. I, I've got that same gear selector in my car, so it's really cool. But I want to just do one thing 
we're in a parking lot. So part of the things you were talking about was how easy it is to park and how easy it is to navigate, yeah. how very simple it is. And you see you've got the trajectory with the lines and I'm gonna overshoot that one. So let's go to this one. Just that easy to navigate. And I'm off a little bit because <laughs> I'm just not used to this vehicle. But once you get used to it, it'll be so easy to park and navigate if you want to back up parking. There we go. Those guidelines are really nice. They are. Uh, the more you have a use a backup camera, you're going to start going, oh, that's how those lines work. And yeah, okay. they're nice. So there you go. Um, as far as uh, interior sound levels and how quiet the vehicle is, uh, is no mistaking. I mean, it's well insulated. It's a Mercedes Benz, so it's extremely quiet. Uh, you've got safety systems. I'll cover some of those in my review in just a few minutes, and Nathan will also yep. cover those on some of the interior uh, features as well. Uh, acceleration. <laughs> not going to accelerate too much because we are. We just got back into a residential area, uh, but it is a very peppy little engine. It's a uh, uh, four cylinder and I'll give you the stats on that in just a few minutes as well fit and finish um, This is why you buy a Mercedes the fit and finish is uh, par excellence. It's above all else uh, How's it back there Nathan very comfortable? I had plenty of knee room uh, Plenty of leg room underneath the seats and I had I didn't we didn't move my seat I had plenty of leg room up front and actually uh, When I had taken my car in for service once they gave me one of these as a loaner and I fell in love with it. It's a it's a two row SUV, uh, and it's just right sized, and it's just so comfortable. And I, I drove about 150 miles uh, while I had it, and it was very comfortable. And um, just overall fit and finish was excellent. It's a Mercedes. You feel safe in it. The ride, the quiet. I see you've got the heads up display going on here. I love that. Yep. Uh, so, and of course, Nathan will cover that with you as well and show you about the, if it's adjustable and the different things that you can display up there. So, but that's it. Uh, coming up next is our, my outside review of specs and dimensions and horsepower. And then Nathan will take you for a tour on the inside. Okay. The GLC 300 formatic starts at 40,700 for the front wheel drive. 42,700 for the uh, GLC 300 formatic SUV that we see here. And then there is a GLC 350E formatic uh, that starts at 50,650. Then, of course, there is a GLC uh, uh, AMG versions as well that you can get, and they go up from there. However, the one we're looking at today, this particular vehicle, is stickered at 55,355. Now it is powered by a two liter inline four cylinder uh, with a turbo, produces 241 horsepower and 273 foot pound of torque. And it does have automatic start stop feature as well. And it is driven by a nine speed G-Tronic automatic transmission with formatic permanent all wheel drive. It is capable of zero to 60 speed at 6.4 seconds. Its EPA ratings are 22 city and 27 highway. Now up front you see you have the LED daytime running lights. This particular one does have the chrome and black uh, front grill bars and Mercedes-Benz star. You do have rain detecting variable intermittent wipers and it does have heated uh, spray nozzle jets. You do have body colored front bumper you see that and it also has the parking sensors and on the wheels and tire package you have an 18 spoke uh, 18 inch five spoke wheels and these are machined silver with the distinctive black inlays very nicely done they're riding on p235 60r18 both front and rear and they are all season tires now this car does have the smart key with keyless start it has remote start has an illuminated entry system, does have body colored power heated side mirrors with driver auto dimming. They are power folding and they do have the turn signal indicators. You see this vehicle also does have the privacy glass and on this particular trim level, it does have the blacked out window opening trim and you do have the black roof rails up top as well. Out back, you did see it a few minutes ago, it does have the backup camera and that pops out when you put it in reverse. You do have the LED tail lights 
as well as body colored rear bumper with the black rub strip fascia and then you see the two chrome exhaust ports as well this one also does have the trailering package so you do see the class 2 trailer below as well now going into the vehicle it does have a power lift gate as you would imagine on a mercedes-benz and most most cars nowadays actually give you a shot inside here let me move this cover out of the way i wanted to show you underneath here you've, you you don't do not have a spare tire a compact spare tire but it, you have an enormous amount of storage space and it even looks like you have a little organizer uh, unit there as well and then you do also have a 110 power port here and you've got power folding seats there we go you do have the retractable luggage cover which is what i just moved out of the way to get a better picture now cargo capacity on this vehicle is 19 cubic feet behind the rear seats as you see that one on the right side there however with both seats folded down let me show you that and there we go with both seats folded down you've got 56.5 cubic feet uh, of storage capacity in there and that's uh, that's quite a bit in a moderately mid-sized um, uh, SUV that they've got here you do have four-wheel independent four-link front and five-arm multi-link rear suspension it does have selective damping system off-road comfort suspension you do have illuminated entry system torque vectoring brakes electromechanical power steering and it is totally encompassed with an aluminum and high strength steel body structure so part of the safety that we were talking about earlier is there also with the active brake assist crosswind assist rear view camera seven airbags adaptive braking technology anti-lock brakes electronic stability program four-wheel electronic traction system and trailer stability assist now optional packages you can get an amg line a night night package exterior lighting package leather seating package premium package multimedia package you name it all types of different packages and i'm not going to go into those what their options are and what their prices are you can find those uh, all in detail at the mercedes-benz uh, website now overall length of this vehicle is 103.3 inches overall height 64.5 inches width uh, with the mirrors 82 and a half inches and it rides on a wheelbase of 113.1 inches curb weight is 4,001 pounds it's funny they couldn't shave that one pound and just make it an even 4,000 or two pounds and it would have been 3,999 anyway uh, when properly equipped this vehicle can tow up to 3,500 pounds and its turning circle, Nathan mentioned that earlier, and the uh, maneuverability is uh, 38.7 feet, and its fuel tank is 17.4 gallons. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> we talk about our, our scale of uh, safety, price, appearance, dependability, <clears throat> and economy. Safety, IIHS crashworthy rating, crashworthiness ratings are small overlap front. Uh, is good small uh, front passenger and driver side uh, moderate overlap front is good side crash testings good roof strength headrest structure safety cage and overall evaluation it received a good rating from IIHS and an overall five stars from NHTSA the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration price wise this is right in and competitive with other uh, European or high-end luxury uh, mid-size SUVs again this one prices at $55,355 appearance wise it's a Mercedes-Benz they talk about uh, the sensuous design language of this car you know it is a two box looking SUV mid-size like all others but they've really done a nice job with the lines on it uh, so it is very German, very Mercedes-Benz. You know it from a distance that it is a Mercedes, but it does have some pretty sensual flowing lines to it. And I'll show you some of those in just a second. Dependability is a Mercedes-Benz. Uh, I think, you know, they had a rough patch there in the early 2000s, but their dependability has certainly improved. Uh, so I would give that a high score, uh, being that it's a Mercedes-Benz. Uh, economy, 22 city, 27 highway. Again, right in the mix with... 
um, other mid-size SUVs like this. Uh, quickly going back to overall styling, I think they've done a really good job because like I said, it is kind of just a two box shape, a box on wheels, but they do have some cool lines to it. I really do like the, the matte black plastic trim over the wheel arches and down below as well. So you kick up mud, it's not gonna mess up your paint. Keep the vehicle nice looking. Uh, all the time. I love the front end. I showed you that a few minutes ago. I'll show you a detail in the tail lights. It does have the cross traffic alert. I do like that uh, if you can, we can zoom in there, you can see it does say Mercedes Benz right in the light there. Uh, I do like the overall styling of the vehicle. It does have its own unique look and design to it that does make it stand out from other vehicles. And that's it for the outside review. Um, I could just stand and keep walking around and just blah 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 but Nathan's gonna come over here and fuss at me and tap me on the shoulder so what do you say Nathan it's your turn what do you want to do you want to take the folks inside no you don't want to you're done no no no, no. okay we're done no. Uh, <laughs> no. I want to show you all right Nathan yeah it's your turn take it away there's a lot of stuff to show inside so go go for it yeah it's kind of dripping with technology so we're gonna go take dive in and take a look at the beautiful interior all righty here you go the Mercedes-Benz GLC 300 4Matic comes well equipped with many safety systems, including Brake Assist Plus with Cross Traffic Assist, Distronic Plus with Steering Assist, PreSafe Plus, PreSafe Plus with Pedestrian Detection, Speed Limit Assist, Active Lane Keeping Assist, Active Blind Spot Assist, and PreSafe Brake and Distronic Plus. Um, on the inside of the doors here, I, I, I like all the color combinations. You have a three-person memory setting for your driver's seat. You do have a 12-way power seat uh, for the driver, in, uh, not including a four-position lumbar. All right? And then you've got auto up and down all the windows, and then your mirror controls here, and then, of course... This one here is your uh, folding mirror button right here. This does come with front heated seats in the front. and it does come with a 13 speaker Burmeister sound system along with the 8.4 inch um, infotainment center with the uh, command nav on there. So uh, doing just over a few more features here. Your lock and unlock buttons are right by your door handle, which um, I'm not used to, um, uh, but that is it, it's right there. Um, and it actually does make a quick sense for your fingers to go right up there and push those. All right, and then over here you have your trunk release. You also have nice storage, two different bottle or can holders right there and then some more storage under here. Um, down here you have your electronic parking brake. Up here you've got your lights. It does have auto lights on here. Okay, this is your fog lamp over here and this of course controls your dimness and brightness of your dashboard lights. This is your active steering assist, on or off. The light means it's on. If the light is on, it's on. And then you have your lane keeping assist, now it's on. And then this is the HUD display. So heads up and uh, let's see if we can get that up here. There you go. So hopefully you can see it right there. Um, information on it kind of changes uh, depending on what's going on in the vehicle. Uh, most of the time I was driving, it was uh, the digital miles per hour, which was really nice to see. Okay, down here in the dashboard, you got your speedometer and your tack, and then you've got the uh, the dash lines for the uh, fuel gauge. There's no actual um, needle that moves, and it's the same thing for the engine temp. In the middle here, you have your driver's information center. Okay, and back and up a little bit on the steering wheel controls. This stuff here will control your driver's information screen. And if I close my door, you'll, we'll get a little better luck doing that. Okay, so if I use my up and down arrows, here we go. Just cut, you can scroll right through the screens. No additional buttons needed. Okay, and then if I go over here to the right buttons, then I've got uh, infotainment stuff. So I've got volume, mute, phone uh, hang up, phone on, and then your voice command button. And this does have uh, voice command navigation as well as other features for voice command. Okay, it also has a power um, tilt and telescoping wheel. And I really like, I, can, I don't know if you can see it here, but Mercedes-Benz actually gives you a really big knob that sticks out to control it. 
instead of like the sort of the small little uh, arrow pad. So I really like that. Moving over here, you've got an 8.4 inch LCD screen display, which is very, very sharp. Um, you do have the round uh, air vents, and I really like <clears throat> this this open uh, open pore ash wood trim finish. It's not a polish, it's not glossy. You know, a lot of times the glossy stuff, um, what happens is, is that it, um, it ends up reflecting in the sun on, in certain circumstances. And so it's just nice to see it um, like this. Okay, I do happen to like this chrome strip that goes behind here. Um, I'm not a super big fan of these screens that kind of just sort of stick there. I really wish uh, they would have like pushed the air vents down a little bit tilt it a little bit and raise the dashboard a hair. And I think they could have fit that 8.4 inch screen right in there. But saying that, <clears throat> the screen is beautiful. It's very, very crisp, very clear. And there are just a ton of features on there. Um, for the purposes of this uh, video, um, I'll let you know again, it's a uh, Burmeister sound system, 13 speakers, and it has a digital amplifier, which adjusts the sound as the car moves. Um, so it can compensate for any sort of other sounds that are happening. Um, and it does have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay on it, as well as a myriad of other features. All right, down here you have physical controls for your climate. This is a dual zone climate control. So driver and passenger temperature settings. Um, and when you hit those, you can see them on the infotainment screen changing. You do have a physical uh, sync button, which I like. Uh, so you can match the two sides together. And there's your fan speed and so on. So all uh, really nice controls and physical. So you don't have to go in the menu to do it. If you want to look at the menu up in the screen, then press the menu button. And then you're going to see um, different things change. So you can do that and have a really nice graphic display if you want. Otherwise, you just use the physical buttons. Moving down here, you do have a single CD player, which I still love to see. You have a physical navigation, radio and media button, a physical telephone button, a physical uh, button here with a picture of a vehicle on it, which brings you to this screen. And then you can use these knobs or this to scroll through. So there I can see the opera owner's manual, I can look at time, vehicle settings, my driving modes, consumption, okay? Down here, you sort of have a set of some things that stay constant, like your temperatures left and right, what mode is on, if the AC is on, the fan setting, compass, and time. Other than these physical buttons right here, the way to control the infotainment screen is down here. What is interesting is that it is not a touch screen. So Mercedes on purpose has not made it a touchscreen, wanting your hands to be down here uh, working. So down here you have a dynamic mode selector. So as I go through those, you're gonna see a display here and you're gonna see a display here. So you have sport, you have sport plus, you've got uh, individual, which you then you can customize each part, uh, like steering, engine, and climate. Oh, and the auto start stop feature. You can turn that on or off and, and make some settings there. Uh, down here, this is how you switch to shift manually. And this is your auto start stop button. This is your volume up and down. It just rolls. Power off of the media, uh, infotainment system. And then trash control. Trash control off. Okay, this acts like a mouse pad right here. So you can, you can swipe and you can see things on the screen moving. So it works just like the mouse on your computer. So I swipe down and I go to the bottom system. Swipe up, I go to you know the top. Okay, um, if I wanna select something, it's simply a push right on here, just like a mouse does, it clicks, okay? The other way you can control the system is with this rotary knob. Now the rotary knob does spin, it goes left, right, diagonal, and it clicks. If you use a rotating knob, you can actually rest your hand on here, which I think is really cool. And then, so kind of like this, and then nothing nothing moves. This doesn't work. It's just kind of an interesting, I don't know if there's a sensor there or what, but then you'd think it, the two would be conflicting with each other, but they don't. All right. 
opening this up, you got dual cup holders. You got, so you got a, a cigar lighter and an ashtray right there if you want it, or just use it for storage. Okay. Now, back here on the armrest, if I push the button, and I just push that right there, I like how they split open. I like that. And we have got dual USB inputs right here for your uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And then you have an SD card slot that would be for um, your info, your navigation, I believe. Hey, otherwise, a nice, fairly deep storage area. Close this up. Let's go over to the glove compartment. Open that up. Okay, you got nice, deep storage under here. Typically, owner's manuals will go up there. And then down here, you have another deep storage area. Okay, passenger side uh, has uh, eight-way power. Um, didn't, does not have the, the headrest on that side isn't powered, even though it has the knob. We do have a heated seat, and uh, the, otherwise the controls are just the same. Moving up here, you do have a uh, chromaticum here, and you do have your home link buttons down here. And then, of course, you have your lights. The, um, I like these. Mercedes put these in. Um, they just kind of shine down on the center and give you... Um, just a little glow at night so you can you can see things as it gets dark. All right, stepping in the back here, you're going to see the doors look very much alike to the front. And they are heated. Hey, you got the Burmeister two speakers in the door here. And if I move this, you do notice that there are dual seat back pockets. Hey, and then you have, uh, you know, ventilation that the passengers can control a little bit right in here. This is the airflow and then, of course, the air direction. All right, let's close this door. These just open like this. And the seats are very comfortable. You do have a panoramic sunroof up here, so you got some sunlight that will come through the cover, but not a lot. We, we had it out in the sun and it was quite shady in here, but it did allow for light. So kind of like keeping the heat out, but allowing light in. And then the uh, center armrest right here. You got a cover here that opens, you just push a button. You've got some storage, okay? And then if you push down here, you've got dual cup holders and you just simply set your cup in there and it starts to unwind and unfold as you put your cup in there. And I can't really get a great picture. There we go. So on the inside, you're talking about headroom in the rear. Okay, seats, well, I left the seat where, where Rob drove last and I left it where he was. Uh, as far as my head goes, even with the, uh, uh, panoramic sunroof, I've got, oh, well, you know, a good two and a half, three inches of headspace. And then I got just oodles of leg room. Okay, there's lots of great details and nuanced little design features on this car. But my absolute favorite is the speaker grill here on the doors for this Burmeister stereo system. I absolutely love the detail in that speaker grill. Uh, it actually stands up to the look and the design language of the rest of the car. Very high end, very Mercedes. That is my favorite thing. All right. So my very favorite thing on this particular car has got to be the infotainment screen and the controls. Um, I, I, I've never operated one of these before. I've played with them. My, my brother-in-law has a, a Mercedes and Rob has one. So occasionally... I have had a little chance to tinker with them, but not much at all. These were very intuitive. Um, it was really easy to use. And I really like the fact that you can use both buttons um, as, as you wish. You can rest your hand on the top one and use the bottom one. They don't interfere. And I think that's just awesome. All right. That's my favorite thing. Hi, folks. I'm Edie Amin. <laughs> What am I supposed to say to that? <laughs> I'm, I'm FDR. <laughs> Man, you love cool collector cars. Pick a setting to hit that subscribe Pick button. Pick a what? Did I say a second? A is, that, is that like a, a set, Dutton? A setting. <laughs> this goes back to earlier times. A Dutton and a second. <laughs>